What's going on YouTube? It's your boy No Limits. In this video, we're gonna be going over my exact trading system that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is the system I use to profit consistently past funding challenges. And this is the system that actually made me profitable. So this is gonna be a recording of a one-on-one -on -one session that I did with one of the members in my Discord. He needed some help uh, creating a trading system. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned. I'm sure you guys are going to learn a lot. All right, so I'm going to be going over my current trading system. Um, basically, everything I do, my routine, everything. So let's start um, with what pairs that I trade. So the only pairs that I'm currently trading is US30 and NAS. Okay. Every day, I come to the market at the same time every day. So I'm in central time. So... I wake up at 7.30, I'm on the charts by 8 a.m. And then opening bill is at 8.30. So that gives me about like 15 to 30 minutes while I'm on the charts to do my analysis and to like kind of just like get my mind right, you know, clear my mind and like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. every day, the times that I'm in trades is typically between like 8.20 and like 8.30. Sometimes I'm in trades a little bit before opening bill, and then sometimes I, I'm in trades a little bit after open bill. But for the most part, I'm trying to wait until after 8.30, but sometimes like the setup happens right, right around that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the first step of this strategy is to find your daily bias, right? Or find your weekly bias and then find your daily bias. And do you know what I mean by that? Finding your bias? Like which way the market is going? Right. So you so you want to find which way you think the market is going to go for the whole week and then for just that day as well. So basically, I just go to the higher time frames, the weekly and the daily. And this analysis is typically like 30 seconds for each time frame, right? 30 seconds to a minute. So this weekly candle, I'm looking at like this weekly candle and like the, the the most recent weekly candles. I'm not looking all the way down here. So just from looking at this, I'll hide my drawings. I can easily identify we're in an uptrend. This candle is pulling back into this zone right here. So, mm -hmm. right. So this is immediately, in my opinion, a buy zone off the weekly time frame. So now the this current candle is retracing. So this can be considered as like a bullish weekly bias. You know what I'm saying? If we're expecting a reaction off of this zone. Yeah. So now, boom, I got my weekly bias. Now I go to my daily bias, right? Now we're starting to see the candlesticks. Now we're paying attention to the most recent candlesticks. We can easily see that price is pulling back into this zone right here. Right? And the candlesticks are starting to form dojis. This candlestick... um you know, closed with a little body, wicks on both sides. This is the doji, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now this is definitely an area where I can see price reacting at for buy. So now let's say if we were getting ready to look for trades right now, it's it's a, it's, it's a new day, like it's uh, 8.30, right? And we're looking for trades. I have my weekly bias is bullish and my daily bias is bullish as well. So now the next step in our strategy is to find your major zones, right? At one point, I was trading off the higher time frames too. But since I switched back over to indices only, basically, I'm back to trading kind of like the lower time frames. Because what I will tell you is swinging indices is hard, bro. I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie. Indices move so freaking much and they can be so unpredictable sometimes that I do not recommend swinging NAS and US 30. And I honestly recommend you don't need a you don't need the whole move. These things move so much in a day, you can catch 30 to 50 points a day and be cool with that. And that's what I had to realize. Forex pairs don't move as fast, right? And so it's gonna take longer. You know, you're going to be expecting bigger moves or trying to catch bigger moves on forest pairs. 
But you don't have to swing these indices, bro. So after we mark off our major zones off the daily, four hour, one hour, those are pretty much your, your major zones. Now I'm lazy. I don't like to, I don't like to redraw, delete my markings and redraw them every week. I like to just keep them there and then adjust them. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I feel like it's not necessary. Like sometimes my my chart does need to be cleaned up a little bit, you know, and I'll do that if I notice that my chart needs to be cleaned up. But for the most part, I leave my drawings on my charts. You know, you already know how to draw find your major zones, right? So I'm making off my major zones off the daily, four hour, one hour, right? So then the next step after that is you're going to identify your ranges. Oh, and at any point, if you have any questions, just feel free to, you know, ask, you know? Yeah. So the next part of the strategy is just identify your ranges. Basically, what I mean by identify your ranges is just identify areas where you think it would be a good area to take a trade at, you know? It's as simple as that. Identify areas where you think you could take a good trade. So, for example, if this is where we were at in the current market and I'm, you know, the session is about to open and I'm looking for a trade. Now I'm looking for areas where I could find a, a decent potential trade. So this is this would be an area where we could look to sell at or at the bottom of this range right here. This would be an area where we could buy at, obviously, with the right candle conversation, candle confirmations. So, for example, today, when the session started, we were right here, right? This is this is this morning. We were right here. And my bias for today was bullish. So. I was waiting for the market to either push down back into this zone to look to buy or I was looking for a buy above here to catch it to target because this is this is clean this is clean area to take buys above this level because it's a it's a clean straight shot up like there's when the market goes up comes above this area there's nothing stopping it from touching this next area it should just go straight to that area you get what I'm saying yeah. market came down boom news pushed it up right away I mean, there was really no clear candle entry to do it. You would have just had to take an impulse of buy. But I did catch the move where price retraced all the way back down to the zone. Right here. And I caught this buy back up. Well, this, this little move right here. I caught this little move right here. And that was enough for me. That's 57 points. I'm telling you, bro, all you need is 30 to 50 points a day. You're not, you don't have, when you're trading indices, bro, you do not have to catch these gigantic moves because I know you like to swing trade, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, you don't have to catch these gigantic moves when you're trading indices. It's going to be a lot harder to catch swing trades on indices because they move crazy like this, you know? Yeah. Now, you want to step four is you want to look for setups that literally basically just correlate with your daily bias. So if your daily bias is bullish, then you should. I'm not saying you can't take sales because there will be sell opportunity, even though you have a daily and weekly bias for bias, there will be opportunity to take sales. I'm just saying you have a higher probability of winning your trade when your trade correlates with your daily and weekly bias. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But that does not mean you can't take sales because we're, we're looking for only 30 to 50 points. So step five is use specific entries from your playbook, right? This is my playbook. So I've been trading for four years now. I've always been trading simple price action. So what I did for the last four years is every time I want to trade, I screenshotted it and added it to a camera roll. And the reason I did this, I labeled what type of trade it was, what type of setup. And so for the last four years, I had this gigantic camera roll 
of winning trades. And this is how I develop my win my playbook. Is I go back, I look at this camera roll, camera roll, and I can see um all the setups that worked for me in the last four years. There were breakouts, they were break and retest, there were Fibonacci entries. There were trend line, uh, not trend line bounces, but like trend line breaks. Like when you break a trend line, you know what I'm saying? Each of these sections right here in my playbook, there was a point in time where I only traded this specific entry for a, a significant period of time. So there was a time where I only traded breakouts, right? There was a time where I only traded Fibonacci's. There was a time when I only traded trend line breaks. There was a time when I only traded break and retest. And so I now have put them all together and developed a playbook. So now when I come to the market every day, I'm only looking for these five things. So every day when I come to the market, I'm literally just looking for these setups right here that I have seen thousands of times. I've won thousands of trades just trading these entries. So yeah, like like I said, everybody's entry criteria is different. And this is why I'm saying why it's important to know your playbook. What what entries have you seen? Because you've been trading for a while now. So what entries are you seeing that work for you? Like your bread and butter. You know what I'm saying? Every all your winning trades, you want to start documenting them now. So now when you go through these slumps. And you go through these times where you don't feel like you have an edge in the market. And when you're going through like these losing streaks, you can look, go back and look at, okay, what have I done in the past that's worked? And I need to go back to doing what, what I know always works. And that's how mm -hmm. I develop this system now is because I've gone through many losing streaks. I've gone through many slumps and I've changed my system a bunch of times. And I always just go back to the times when I was winning a lot and just analyze what I was doing. Oh, I was doing breakouts. Okay. But now, now my breakup set breakout setups are losing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what else have I done? Oh, I was using Fibonacci entries at one point. Right. So now I just combined all of these things that I know that I've done that have won that like that I'm comfortable with. And I just put them all into one playbook. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I feel like you may need to do. You need now I have I, I have six six playbook entries. You might only have one or you might only have two. You know what I'm saying? So you need to figure out your type of entry. Cause I'd be looking at your analysis, bro. Your analysis be on point. You you be having the right analysis. You know, I you definitely know how to mark up charts, but I feel like you need to find find your your entries that you like to use, bro. And so typically volume comes in right around that 830 mark, right? Because, uh, you know, the the New York Stock Exchange is opening. So yeah. that's why I pretty much base all of my trades during that time frame is because that's when, number one, where I see the most cleanest setups. And number two, when the volume is coming in. So that that's another uh, very important part of kind of like becoming consistent is timing. Your timing in the market, because you can, I know there have been times where you've seen the most cleanest setup, right? And yeah. it was like great confirmation, you know, like everything you could have asked for, right? You got everything you were looking for, but this trade just didn't work out probably because you weren't in session or probably because there was no volume in the market, right? That happens to me a lot. So like now I've kind of like identified this time where I'm most profitable. So every day, you know, this is why I'm only trading like near that opening bell time is because I started to notice that I'm, most of my winning trades are coming around that time. You know what I'm saying? So... Mm -hmm. And the thing about trading indices is it makes it easy. It makes it easier because, you know, like like a pair like GBP, JPY, that pair will probably like randomly move 100 pips in the London session 
right? And then come back and move like 15 pips in the New York session and then randomly move another 100 pips in the Asian session. You know what I'm saying? So like US 30 and NAS always are typically going to move around that time. And that's why I like kind of like started focusing only on this because I know every day it's going to move at the same exact time. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get down to like trade management. Because this is very, very, very important, right? Because once you start winning trades and once you, um, you know, start finding your edge a little bit more, how you manage your trades is super important. So number one is on your, on your best setups. So I know this is why it's important to have a playbook. On my best setups, I'm risking more on setups that I'm, that I know have a higher win percentage, right? So basically on like certain specific setups, I know to risk a little bit more. Like on this specific type of setup, I would have known, you know, with that type of candle confirmation, instead of risking like 1%, I would have probably risked like 2% on this trade, you know? So all I'm saying is on your, on your, on your best trades, risk more, you know what I'm saying? You always have to be in the mindset of, managing um your risk so there's always there's always going to be ways that you could have managed your risk better but at this point now i'm always trying to like lose a little bit less than what i planned so if, if i decided to risk 200 dollars on a trade and this trade is going against me and it's not looking good right and I pretty much know I'm going to lose this trade. There's no point in letting it hit your full $200 loss. You know what I'm saying? You could yeah. cut that risk. If you know that trade is going to lose, it's better to take that $110 loss than a $200 loss. These are the, the small little changes, right? It might seem small, but this is like how you're actually going to grow your account because If you're if all your wins are get, if all your losses are getting managed and all your wins you're taking you're only taking these good trades right these these a plus setups that you're risking double on because you know this is your bread and butter your your wins are going to be way bigger than your losses this is why it's important to have a playbook as well so the next thing now this is uh, this is this is really like depending on the person. Me personally, I like focusing on one to one, one to one point five, and one to two risk to reward. That's that with my current win rate. That's all I really need to grow my account and to pass challenges and to get payouts. Some people focus on bigger risk to rewards, but what you need to know is when you have a bigger risk to reward, your win rate is going to go down. So, if you're somebody who like you don't mind having a low win rate. And your and your have a higher risk to reward, it, and your psychology is able to deal with that. You know that might work for you better. But me personally, I my psychology does not deal with having a low win rate, low win rate. Well, you mm -hmm. know, because I get discouraged when I lose multiple trades in a row. I get discouraged when I. The next thing is. Understanding the difference between high probability and low probability setup. So basically, this is why it's important to have a playbook because anything in your playbook is automatically pretty much going to be categorized as a high probability setup or else it wouldn't be in your playbook, right? These trades mm -hmm. are literally your bread and butter. Your e There's a trader named, uh, his name is Lance. I don't know his last name, but he's a professional trader. Um, seven figure, eight figure trader. He calls them easy money plays. So you should only be trading your easy money plays, and that's basically the the trades in your playbook. The difference between high pro probability and low probability setups is what's going to make the difference in your win rate. Obviously, this is obvious. You're being selective. You know, not every day is going to be trading day. You know, you're focusing on these high quality setups. Yes. Um, the number one thing you always want to avoid is avoiding big losses. 
all you have to do is just avoid big losses and you can pretty much be profitable in my opinion right now i'm taking like one trade a day for each account so if i, I i'm going through like multiple accounts going at one time right now right between like a live account between a bunch of different funding challenges funded actual funded accounts right i don't have a trade high for your hooked up right now but sometimes like I'm taking one trade on this account, one trade on that account, or sometimes I'm taking the same trade on two accounts. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is I'm taking one trade on each account per day and then I'm calling a day. You know what I'm saying? I've gone through those phases where I was super undisciplined and I'm taking like five, six, seven trades. I lose a trade. Now I'm trying to make it back. Revenge trading, over trading, mm -hmm. over leveraging. I've gone through all of those phases already and I'm, I've come to the conclusion that that's not going to get me to where I need to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's, that's my whole system, bro. It's the same thing every day. I'm looking for the same type of five setups, right? And then I'm trading the same pairs at the same time every single day. And it's been working for me, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like ever since I kind of like stopped doing Forex and switched over to futures, I've gotten more profitable.